Hello everyone, my name is Charlie Simpkins and I am the Digital Consultant for the Mississippi Library Commission. In this video, I will be discussing computational thinking, its importance, and how it can be incorporated into library programming. My goal for this video is simple. After watching this video, you will have a better understanding of computational thinking and its connection to public libraries. I hope to impart how computational thinking is not just for computer scientists, but is for essential for everyone today. This presentation will cover the following topics. What is computational thinking? What are the four cornerstones of computational thinking? What do computational thinkers look like? Or what makes up a computational thinker? How is computational thinking present in our everyday life? Why does computational thinking matter? And how can computational thinking become present in your library? According to Jeanette M. Wing's paper, Computation Thinking, What and Why, from 2010, computational thinking is the thought process involved in formulating problems and their solutions so that the solutions are represented in a form that can be effectively carried out by an information processing agent. So what does that mean? I would sum it up as a way to break a problem down and develop a solution computers or other people can follow. It's a systematic, methodical way of solving problems or situations. While typically applied in computer science fields, its practicality can help us in everyday lives. With practice, we can use computational thinking for smaller, mundane problems or situations up to necessary, life-changing ones. So what does a computational thinker look like? There are two sides that we can talk about here the concepts and the approaches. The concept side addresses subject knowledge. The concepts are logic, which is predicting and analyzing, evaluation, which is making judgments, algorithms, which is making steps and rules, patterns, which is spotting and using similarities, decomposition, which is breaking down into parts, and abstraction, which is removing unnecessary detail. The approach side addresses skills and behaviors. The approaches are tinkering, which is changing things to see what happens, creating, which is designing and making, debugging, which is finding and fixing errors, persevering, which is keeping going, and collaborating, which is working together. Depending on the source, the concepts that make up computational thinking can vary, but there are four cornerstones present on every list I found. One cornerstone is decomposition, which involves breaking down a complex problem or system into smaller parts that are more manageable and easier to understand. This helps make large or novel problems more approachable, thus more solvable. Let's say we want to bake a cake. Decomposing this task would create a list of smaller problems or tasks. What kind of cake do we want to bake and for how many? What ingredients do we need and when do we need each ingredient to be added? Another cornerstone for computational thinking is pattern recognition, which involves finding the similarities or patterns among small decomposed problems that can help us to solve more complex problems more efficiently. Going back to our cake example, we can see that recipes for cakes are similar because of patterns. Baking is a science, so we need precise amounts of specific ingredients, ingredients that are added at specific times, and they all have a specific temperature and period of time they are baked. We can look at common solutions to these patterns, such as what amount of ingredients to mix together, when to mix them, and how long and what temperature to bake. Another cornerstone of computational thinking is abstractions, which involves filtering out essentially ignoring the characteristics that we don't need in order to concentrate on those that we do. Most people would agree that general characteristics of cakes are that they are made up of ingredients at 
specific amounts and need to be baked. These are abstractions. We don't get into the finer details like what ingredients are needed, what specific measurements of the ingredients we need, or at what temperature or how long to bake it. Another cornerstone of computational thinking is algorithm, which is a plan, a set of step-by-step -step instructions to solve a problem. We follow certain algorithms so frequently that we do them on autopilot. For example, brushing your teeth is following an algorithm. We don't have to actively think. I think about a lot of different things when brushing my teeth, but I don't think I need to get my toothbrush, I need to moisten the bristles, I need to get some toothpaste on the bristles, I need to scrub each tooth with this, etc. An algorithm doesn't have to be ingrained in us for it to be an algorithm. Back to the cake example. The algorithm for baking a cake is the recipe. It's a step-by-step -step instructions with a list of specific items needed and listing how much. Let's look at the cornerstones of computational thinking in everyday situations. First up is decomposition. Imagine planning a dinner party for some friends. We can break this idea down into smaller components such as selecting a menu, the guest list, the time and date, etc. These smaller parts added together equal the dinner party and are interrelated but can be accomplished separately. Next up is pattern recognition. It would be choosing which checkout line to get in when shopping. We may recognize from previous experiences longer lines take longer, so we get into the shorter line. But we also take into consideration how many items each customer has. Imagine two checkout lines. One has two customers with shopping carts overflowing with items, and the other has ten customers, each with one or two items. Which line would you get in? Next, we have abstraction. Abstraction is a lot like when giving a book talk or review of a movie or novel. You give the most pertinent details to get the audience interested, hopefully without spoilers. You don't include every detail, but just the most important ones to get the idea across. And lastly, algorithms. Algorithm in everyday life is like following a recipe. You have the steps laid out and everyone should be able to follow them. Another example is driving directions. Anyone should be able to follow the turns and end up at the same location. While I say that computational thinking promotes fundamental skills, let's see what the experts say. According to the International Society for Technology and Education and the Computer Science Teachers Association's document, Operational Definition of Computational Thinking for K-12 Education in 2011, identified the following attitudes as essential for computational thinking. Confidence in dealing with complexity. Persistence in working with difficult problems. Tolerance for ambiguity. The ability to deal with open-ended problems. And the ability to communicate and work with others to achieve a common goal or solution. Think about how these attitudes are essential in today's modern society. What are some activities that can promote the four cornerstones of computational thinking? Decomposition, pattern recognition, abstraction, and algorithms by your library. Coding camps meet many of the cornerstones. If creating a game or a scene, the patron will need to isolate what actions the character needs to do and in what order. They will also need to determine what kind, if any, obstacles are in the way. The patron can determine if any of the actions are repeated in specific orders and if it is similar to something else that they have already seen or created. The patron will also need to determine what are the major goals of the scene or film. Finally, the patron will need to write the code for the game or scene. Other activities that can be done in your library that promote computational thinking are makerspaces and STEM challenges. Patrons can be presented with specific challenges and only allowed to use certain items to complete them, or they can be presented with a range of items to see what they can create with it. They will still need to analyze what specifically task is being requested, how they have seen it done in the past, and what are the main steps of the task, and how to assemble and complete the task. 
TAB, or Teen Advisory Boards, also promote computational thinking. To develop programs and promote collections, the members will need to break down what specifically they are wanting to accomplish with a program or promotion. Is it like something they've seen in the past and was it successful? What steps do they need to see the program or promotion completed? And writing up plans in case they can't make it to an event. Two more activities that promote computational thinking are cooking demonstrations or classes and completing jigsaw puzzles. How do you think the cornerstones are demonstrated in cooking demonstrations and completing jigsaw puzzles? I would like to refer to what Jeanette M. Wing wrote in the article Computational Thinking for the March 2006 issue of Communications of the ACM. She wrote, Computational thinking is a fundamental skill for everyone, not just for computer scientists. To reading, writing, and arithmetic, we should add computational thinking to every child's analytical ability. I hope what we have discussed today shows you how computational thinking isn't just programming computers, but influences our everyday lives. It is a skill that is essential in today's society and one that needs to be fostered. Here are a list of resources that contain activities promoting computational thinking. While some of the activities focus on coding specifically, there are plenty of unplugged activities to explore and share. Please note that when visiting the last resource, you will be going to an overview page of computational thinking. You will need to click printables along the top of the page to visit the activities. Thank you for joining me for this presentation on computational thinking. If you have any questions or comments about this topic or ideas for future topics, please let me know. I've included my contact information on this screen. I look forward to hearing from you and have a nice day.